accept that invitation and honor it. We surrender and submit all to you. We commit the rest of this month into your care. Father God Almighty, we pray for the wisdom, the understanding, the, 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 the enlightenment that we need to flow into the next month in Christ Jesus. We thank you for having brought us along all these months of this year. And the year remains only two more months to go. It is of your doing and we appreciate it. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for favors. Thank you for life. And above all, your presence. Thank you for your church, Lord. Week in, week out, we have gathered together in your presence. And some of us take it for granted. We don't even think about it. We are here and none of us is lost. Know that people are not dying. Know that people are not drifting away from the church from the body of Christ. But you have been so, so, so wonderful to us that you have kept us intact, kept us in you. Many have left for whatever reason, but those that you have kept together are not moved by their absence, but only pray for them. Thank you for the spirit of sonship that you have put in this church. Thank you, Lord. We are so, 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 ever so grateful to you. May your name be praised, honored and glorified. Thank you for those who will be joining us today, wherever they are. Whether they join us today or they through the streaming in Facebook, on Facebook or YouTube at a later time. May the message that you have for us today reach them. May it meet them in health. May it encourage them. May it draw them closer to you. May it bring reconciliation with the Father. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the body of Christ that is unbreakable, that will not be overcome by the gates of hell, that will be triumphant in all things that will be intact and remain the foundation and pillar of truth. We bow down. We are humbled by the knowledge that you have chosen us to be part of that church, not by our works or goodness, or your own, but by your own loving kindness that we are chosen, gifted, and blessed with eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. I cover all members of this spring church with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover those that will be joining this spring church in the future with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover those who have experienced ministry in this spring church wherever they are today wherever you have moved them on to continue to be a blessing to their community and their local assemblies with the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Spirit of the living God, we submit and surrender to you. 
take absolute control. Take absolute control. Take absolute control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a wave offering. Please, please give him a wave offering. Don't always forget to give him his morning offerings on Sundays. A wave offering, a wave offering unto the Lord. He is deserving. Remember, he made all things for his good pleasure, for his pleasure. Our desire always should be to give the Lord his pleasure. If you can do that, you have praised him, you have worshipped him, you have glorified his name. If you can render to him his pleasure at all times. And this morning we begin with a wave offering. We wave our hands unto the Lord the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jehovah El Shaddai, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Great I Am. You deserve all glory, all honor, all adoration, all power and all praise belong to you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for that which you have accomplished on the cross of Calvary for us. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for being with us, preparing us and keeping us in the beloved. We are highly privileged. And this we very well know and say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we hear me? I guess so. Yes, we can hear you. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah, praise God, amen, hallelujah. Today we want to discuss a topic, housekeeping, housekeeping, amen. Housekeeping. We took our memory verse today from Second Corinthians 13, verse 5. Second Corinthians 13, verse 5. And it says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. This is to the believers. He says, examine yourselves. Spiritual housekeeping is a time for examining and reviewing one's life in order to determine whether or not you are where you ought to be. If you noticed, the Bible says, examine yourselves. In our memory verse, just read. To ascertain something, are you in the faith? What does it mean to be in the faith? Are you a Christian? Do you understand what it means to be a Christian? Examine yourself. If you noticed, the Bible says, 
that you are the one to examine yourself. Not the pastor, not your brother, not your sister. No one should judge you. You have to examine yourself. God is not the one to examine you. The Holy Spirit is not the one to examine you. Surely not our Lord Jesus Christ, the one to examine you. He says, examine yourself to see if you are still in the faith. Because if Christ is in you, you should be in faith. That's the way it says, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Be critical. Be frank with you. Don't go by whatever someone else tells you. Remember the Bible says in the book of Romans that it is the spirit of God that witnesses with your own spirit that you are children of God or that you are a son of God. You have your own spirit. That's why you should not be mistaken for the Holy Spirit. Neither should you be mistaken for the demon of our satanic spirit, evil spirits, or the spirit of the world. You have your own spirit. And the Bible says, examine yourself to know whether you are in faith, in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. Don't you understand yourselves? Do you understand yourself? Are you sure the Holy Spirit dwells in you? Are you sure you are a Christian? Because it's very important to make sure this thing. That's why the Bible says, examine yourself. He said, know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you. Because if you are a Christian, Jesus Christ is in you. Jesus Christ is in you. And he went on to say, except ye be reprobates. In other words, if Christ is not in you, you are reprobate. You are really not what you are claiming to be. You are probably uh, what I call the mixed multitudes among Christians. Children of men among the sons of God. Carrying the ministry of the church of the world into the ministry of Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit, being reprobate. Amen. Hallelujah. Why should you examine yourself? For the purpose of self-discovery. You know, it is easy to put on faces. You meet people, you sound them out, you know what they want to hear, what will impress them. You change and present yourself as what they want. You are more Christians, you are speaking Christianese. When you are where there are no Christians, you sit with them, you joke with them, you make fun with them, you do all kinds of things with those people. You are everything to every man. But a time comes when the Bible says, examine yourself. This self-discovery, you are to examine yourself to you do a self-discovery. You are examining yourself with frankness, honesty. No one to please. Face the truth. Look yourself in the mirror 
and discover who you really are. This self-discovery covers areas like your faith standing. Your faith standing. Are you still standing as a person of faith? Amen. Your health. What is your health situation? Are you in health? Or are you oppressed by sickness and disease, infirmity? Are you under the oppression of the spirit of infirmity? Your economic well being. What is your economic well being? Frankly, looking at yourself, are you satisfied with it? Amen. Your ministry. As a child of God, we all have a ministry of reconciliation. When God is in us, reconciling the world unto himself, through us as vessels of honor. Your relationships. Socially, how do you relate to people? When people meet you, do they go away with a sweet taste in their mouth, with grace, with joy, with hope? Or do they go away feeling empty, exhausted, stressed out, just because they had contact with you? Purchase your relationships, examine yourself. Do you transmit Jesus Christ? Do people meet you and want to meet you again and want to remain in your presence? Or do they meet you and say, I'm glad that person has gone. They, take a, they will take a deep breath, exhale. Happy they've gotten rid of you. Even sometimes when you, because of your attitude and your the way you carry yourself and behave towards them, when you tell them about Jesus Christ, of course, it doesn't resound because your spirit is wrong. They will tell you, accept Jesus Christ so that you can go and leave them alone. But of course, you know, they have not really accepted Jesus Christ. They just want to get rid of you. Amen? So, in, in short, this examination and exercise is intended for the discovery of whether you are enjoying self, this, this self-examination, house cleaning, examine yourself and see what and where you are and do something about it. This exercise is intended for the discovery of whether you are enjoying the benefits and abundant life that Jesus Christ procured for you as a believer on the cross. It's wanting to go about counting I'm a Christian. What are the benefits of being a Christian? Some people will just tell you, oh, well, certain things are not manifesting because in this world, uh, we are supposed to see persecution, we are supposed to see uh, suffering and all that. If you are suffering, it's not for the sake of the gospel, it's not the right suffering. If you are not being persecuted for the sake of the gospel by people, it is not the right claim, not the right place to be. You are being persecuted because you are not in the Lord. The Bible says, Jesus said, in me, you will find peace. But in the world, you will find persecutions, tribulations, suffering. And that is what the world has to offer. The world has the opposite of peace to offer you. Anything that steals your peace, anything that takes away your peace from you is from the world. 
Sickness will take peace away from you. Poverty will take peace away from you. Suffering, all kinds of wickedness, threat of death, they will all take away peace from you because no one is in trouble that is not anxious, that has not lost his or her peace. But the Lord says, be anxious for nothing. In other words, remain in me, in all things. In all things, come to me with your prayers and supplications and thanksgiving. And make your requests known to me. That's what the Lord is asking us to do. We are at a place right now. The time of the year right now we are in. We are concluding the month of October, getting into November. Barely two months to the end of the year. And many of us, if not all of us, at the beginning of the year had high hopes. We had expectations. We, we, we looked forward to the things that we were expecting of the Lord to happen to us to, for this year. The question now is, after 10 months, how many of those expectations have been met? Are you where you had hoped to be? at this time of the year or by the end of this year. That's why we have here to do a housekeeping, examining and frankly looking at our situations. If we are not where we, are, we ought to be, why? How did that happen? Are we not in the law? What is going on? Children of God. We can't continue every year repeating the same thing, repeating the same thing, standing in the same spot. And then we say that we are prospering in the Lord. It should not be so. It simply means when we are repeating the same cycle all the time, maybe one year or one month or one day experience or one week experience, we have repeated several times and we say we have been in the law for 20 years. Instead of one year experience, repeated 20 times. In the law, it is progressive. You grow, you expand, you become fruitful in the Lord, according to the Lord's will and calling for your life into your destiny. You work stronger and stronger, the closer your destiny gets. You get, you get happier, get more experience. You relate to people with joy. And when, wherever you go, you exude hope, confidence in the Lord. You don't have to shout about the things of the Lord. Because you're not trying to make any point. The truth is there. And when you open your mouth, you just bring out the truth. For the grace of God is upon you. You don't have to argue about anything of the Lord. You don't win people to the Lord by argument. But you win people to the Lord by expressing the confidence in the Lord and presentation of the Lord. I know in the past when I, I pray, one of the things that was heavy years ago in my heart, and I still pray today, is Lord, please draw me so close to you that I may see you the way you are. So that when I open my mouth to speak to anybody about you, I will describe you exactly the way you are and the person will see you because whosoever sees you the way you are cannot resist you. They will surrender. They will come to see the majesty, the glory and the power of Jesus Christ in his glory. The description will be so real that they will just bow down. 
and say, I believe, whether they know why they believe or not, but the fact that through description, we are able to paint the picture and the portrait of Jesus Christ in his majesty and his glory. That was my prayer. And anytime I minister to somebody and the person gives his or her life to Jesus, oh, my day will be made. I will be blown away. I say, Lord, thank you for giving me the grace to be able to present you to this person in a way that the person was able to grasp and understand. Do you know him that way? We have come to the end of October, going into November and December. We have to examine ourselves. We have to do our housekeeping, take stock, of what we have been doing, where we are, to see if it tallies and agrees with where we set up from and we are heading for. You don't have to go on a treadmill of life and religious practice thinking that we are doing the, same, the right thing, occupying our lives with activities that do not produce any change or result. The things that I call, uh, I refer to as actionable Christianity. Your Christianity, your faith should be actionable. When you deploy them, you will see the result. That's why the Bible tells us that these signs shall follow those that, them that believe. That is demonstrating your faith, putting your faith and your Christianity and belief into action. And the Bible says, these are the results. These signs shall follow. For instance, if you are saved, you should have the ministry of reconciliation. When was the last time you, did, you were a vessel of reconciliation? When was the last time? You brought a soul to Jesus. He says, if you follow me, I will make you fishers of men, if you follow me. And if you are not fishers of men, it merely means you're not following. We have to think about this thing seriously because he's coming again. He's coming for faithful people. He's coming for holy people. He's coming for those who believe him and obedient to him. He's coming for those who, has, who have kept his house intact and waiting his coming. He gave us parables in that direction. You have been given talent. You have been given a ministry. What are you doing with? So today, we simply want to, I will make this as short as possible. Amen. Jesus has procured great things for you as a child of God. You are actually very, very wealthy as a child of God. How? Whatever he wants you own as well. You are the heir of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Whatever belongs to the Father belongs to Jesus and that also belongs to you. That's why I say you are very rich, you are very wealthy. And he went, the Father sent him. Amen. In John 3, 16 and 17, it is written that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And Jesus Christ came 
the Bible said of him that he has come to seek and to save the lost. We find that in Luke 19.10. The father sent him into the world for the world was lost. Say that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible went on to say, the father did not send him to condemn the world. No. He did not send him to condemn the world, but that he would through him might be saved, might save the world. That is reconciling the world unto the father. So that the things that belong to the father will now belong also to those that were reconciled unto him as his sons, which is where you are. Remember the Bible said that do you not know that Christ is in you as a child of God? The spirit of Christ is in you. If he's not, then you are reprobate. Amen? And the Bible says he came to seek and to save the lost. Sometimes it's very tricky when you look at this, this situation. The world is already lost. The father sent him to go and save the world. But then he says, those who believe. And he came, I said, he came to seek and to save. And to seek means to discover, to find out, to reveal. That is to seek when you are looking for something, to look for. That's a better word, simple, better. He came to look for those who are lost that he might save them. When the whole world is already lost. So he doesn't look to he doesn't need to look far. Everywhere you look is a fallen man and lost man. So you need to save everybody. But that's not the case. He came to look for the lost. In other words, even though the whole world is lost, there are a people in the world that should not be there and be lost. They ought not to be lost. Those are the people he's looking for. The whole life in the world is lost. Awaiting hellfire. But then there are people there who are among the lost that should not be lost. He came to look for them, to seek them out and to save them. And it just happened that you happened to be one of those. And the Bible said of them, they were saved before the foundation of the world. So they are being among the lost, behaving like the lost is an aberration. And those are the people that his God, the Father, God the Father sent him to go seek them out and save them. So they don't belong to the fallen world. They don't belong to the children of, of, of Satan. They don't belong to sinful life. They belong to us, created in our image. Being holy, called to holiness. They need to be reconciled with us so that our image the light of our countenance will shine upon them. They are a special people, a chosen generation from the foundation of the world. They are a holy nation, a people set apart for God, holy nation, because they are created in the image of God in true holiness. They are royal priests for their business is to make worship unto the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are peculiar people, people set aside for God's enjoyment. That's who you are, or that's who you ought to be. So today you are examining your life, Doing house clean, cleaning. 
If these things do not work properly in your life or align with this truth, then you have to do house cleaning and removing those things that keep this thing, the blessings and the benefit of God from being your portion here. You see, how do you know those things? How can you itemize them? The Bible showed us very clearly. It says, he came to open your eyes because for you to be lost in the world, you have to be blinded spiritually so that you don't see the truth. He came to open your eyes and to turn you from darkness to light. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. And from the power of Satan unto God, that you may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in him. I believe that is found in Acts 26, verse 18. Sometimes we say, oh, we know Jesus is my Lord, blah, blah, blah. But you don't reflect the changes. You don't know whether that is true or not by your own behavior, by your own practices, by your own belief, because you don't know why he came. The Bible says he came. As he was giving us a ministry of reconciliation, he revealed to us what we ought to do because that is what he came to do. To open your eyes and to turn you from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that you may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in him. If you look at all the things he came to do here, you will see that the result of all them speaks of the fact that you are a chosen generation, you are a, 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 a holy people, you are royal priests, you are peculiar. All of them contained in this purpose. The reason why Jesus Christ came. He says in John 10.10, 10, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You now see why Jesus Christ came? When you receive what we have mentioned above, then you will know that anyone who has received them will have abundant life because you have a peace that passes all understanding that is found only in Christ Jesus. Amen. And having come in obedience to the Father, he accomplished it and completed the work. Accomplished it and completed the work. Amen. That was why he declared it is finished. The gift of salvation has been accomplished and delivered. You are no longer under bondage to Satan. You are no longer under oppression in darkness. Your sins are no longer upon you for he paid for them and took them away from you. And you now have a faith that is found in him. And that faith gives you access and the privileges of what you get from God. And God rejoices where he sees you enjoying these things. That's why the Bible says that God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his own servants and children. And it is written, I will above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Your soul prospers only when you are in Christ. And when you are in Christ, the result, the result is peace. And that peace comes from the fact that there is the absence of the trauma and the suffering and the experience of being separated from Christ and being in the world. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says in John chapter 17, verse 4, Jesus said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. The purpose for which Jesus Christ came, he finished. I'm going to report back to the Father. John 17, Paul tells us that he said, I have glorified your name. I have glorified you. I have done exactly what you sent me to do. And that work was completed. He gave us a report. And what was the work that was completed? The salvation of men. The manifestation of you and me. That have the spirit of the living God dwelling in us. The work of Jesus is done and finished. But have you received your portion yet? That's why we are doing this house cleaning today. Have you received your portion? There is no doubt that his work was done. He accomplished it. He gave the report to the Father. He said, glorified your name. I have finished the work that you sent me. Record is taught. Okay. He did all that. We know the grace of I our Lord Jesus now. Christ. That was what happened. That by he became poor, that through his poverty will become rich. He gave up all this. He gave up the comfort of heaven. He gave up everything. He gave up his life on earth as man and the Son of God, that we can become who God intended us to do to be. Can we say that we appreciate all this and come to him today and say, we are enjoying the life that you have bought for us. We are faithful at the work that you have sent unto us. We are living according to the dictates of our calling and ministry here on earth, taking us to a certain end the Bible called the expected in our destiny. Jesus Christ showed us example. He said, I have glorified you amongst the people. I have finished my work that you sent me to do. My brethren, these things are possible for us to do if we are in him. And not looking at the world that says it is impossible. If we look at the world that says it is impossible, we are no longer believing Christ, but we are believing the world. And believing the world makes you fall short of the glory of the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. The work Jesus, the work of Jesus is done and finished. The question today is, have you received your portion of that work? Have you entered into your possessions yet? Because he has already delivered it to you. His work is finished. You are joint heirs with him. You now have access through him into the presence of God and into the blessings of God. That is the truth. Are we really Christians? Have you received the full blessings of the cross? Food for thought for us confessing Christians. It is okay to say, yes, I am yes, I'm happy. I'm Are you really happy? 
did God call you to be dancing all over the place and say you're happy? When some people are waiting to hear from you, to show them the path and the way to reconciliation with your father, the purpose for which you are saved and sent to them, to turn them from darkness to light, to release them from the power of Satan and bring them to God, to have their sins forgiven them. They are waiting for a savior. And the Lord said, you are the savior that I'm sending to them. And while you are doing that, those are responsibilities and ministries. But then a door is opened unto you to bring you into the wealth of God and the experience of those who are in the Lord in this world. The Bible says that you are ambassadors for Christ. Have you seen any country that will send out ambassadors and not provide for that ambassador in that strange country? You are pilgrims here on earth. Your provisions are in full and completed and supplied. But do you have access to them? Because the one who sent you is wealthy. Your upkeep, anything you need for that which he sent to you, he sent you for, have already been supplied. That is why you cannot see a, con a responsible country send out ambassadors to a foreign country and the ambassadors will go there and be looking for jobs to be able to get their own supplies. They're not going there to fend for themselves. They're going there to represent their own nation and their needs are met. Your needs are met. Amen? He came to seek and to save. Has he found you? Have you received the ministry of reconciliation? If you are a Christian, yes. That is why he said, no, you know that Christ is in you. So the question is, what is keeping us from fully enjoying the abundant life that he has given to us? You know, the Bible says in Romans 5, 1 to 2, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You hear it there. We have peace by Jesus Christ. We have access to the Father. And Jesus went on to say in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. He is that mediator. He is that channel of reconciliation that he has given unto you, if you are in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 19, it is written, and all things are of God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and had given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Amen? Hallelujah. Are you saved? Have you been reconciled with the Father? Have you made peace with the Father? If not, this is the right time. Especially for those who are joining us on YouTube, those who are joining us on Facebook, and to those who will subsequently receive this because some of us share these things to other people. We just go to YouTube and forward it to some friends and family so that they will look at it and listen to it at their own time. Amen? 
You can ask him now. If you have not got your reconciliation and peace with God the Father. Jesus came to make a way for you that you may be reconciled to the Father. For the Father said that he is in him, reconciling the world unto himself. And to us, he said he has given that same ministry of reconciliation so that we can take it to people. He will be in us, reconciling the world unto himself. Amen? If you have not received that reconciliation, if you have not been born again, it means the secret riches of God is this hidden from you. You will be scrambling, scratching, competing, contending with the rest of the world on the things that are on public domain. We are the powerful, we deny you by stealing them from you. But when you are reconciled unto the Father, he opens that door and makes plain to you the hidden riches of darkness. That they may be yours. You don't have to compete with anybody for that. And second thing about the beauty of that riches of darkness is that it doesn't belong to anybody else. It belongs to you. The things that you take from public domain belong to everybody and they are supposed to be owned equally. If you take more than your own portion, you have deprived somebody, you have stolen from somebody, and you will give account of it in the day of judgment. But the things that God gives you as his child that are hidden in darkness, in the world that are hidden in darkness, he gives to you to enjoy and to help you with your ministry. You don't have to account for anything. That's another matter. If you have not been saved, you don't have access to such blessings. I think it's time for you to pray. Wherever you are watching this, it is time for you to pray. You have access. By their fruit, you will know them. Are you saved? Do you know that surely you are saved? Do you know that, how do I put it? You are so sure you are saved. I once told a professor in Florida State University, I know that I know that I know that I know. By the time I finish saying I know that I know that I know that I know. He was convinced. He was convinced. This was a very powerful young professor who was very zealous for Islam. And we had this relationship and we we're talking about Jesus and all that. By the time I finished saying, I know, after ministering and all those things, this guy had to surrender. He brought another word, say that uh, the Quran said that after Muhammad, or uh, that he sent, uh, 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 no, after Jesus, he, that uh, God will send another comforter and they were told that that comforter was Muhammad. I say, where did you read that? I say, no, no, it's in your Bible. It's in your Bible, you send another comforter. And you are claiming that that comforter is Muhammad? I say, you are wrong. So they, they, you just cover your eyes and blindness. But you are a professor, you should know, you should read the Bible, you should tell them to show you where it is written in the Bible that it's Muhammad. He said, but you don't have to mention the name, another comforter, whoever came after Jesus was Muhammad. I said, no, this is where it is written in the Bible, in the book of John, that another comforter is the Holy Spirit. Look at it written here. He will teach you all things. He will remind you of the thing that Jesus taught. He will take the thing that belonged to Jesus and give it to you, show it to you. Look at it here. Somebody deceived you with a lie and you people took it hook, line, and sinker, making wise, and intelligent people like you to look foolish. Look at how it is. Right now, it is there. Who the comforter is. This one was flustered. But when he saw me, he said, I know that I know that I know. And I gave him a few testimonies of miracles that God has performed. Not only for me, but through me. He surrendered. 
That is what we ought to project in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let me just move forward. I'm, I'm repeating myself there. The Bible says that if you don't have that gift of God, if you don't have salvation, you should ask. He will not upbraid you. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, Father, I have glorified your name. I have glorified you because I have done and finished the work that you sent me to do. I have delivered. In other words, the gift of God has been delivered. Have you received it? Have you personally received it? You may say yes or no. That's not important. The important thing is that the Lord Jesus Christ said to himself, by their fruit, you will know them. Do your fruits suggest that you have received the gift of God? If you have not, ask him now. Remember, it is a gift. You can work for it. Ask Jesus into your heart right now. Commit your life into the care of God. Commit yourself into Jesus Christ. Your heart. Repent of your sins. Tell him you are sorry. And he will ask the Father to give you the gift of eternal life in his name. You can do that right now. If I begin to do it and pray right now. Invite Jesus into your heart. Tell him that you believe that he's the son of God who the father has sent to save you from your sins, from damnation. And he will come into your heart today because he says he will not cast away anyone that comes to him, he will not refuse you. The work he has done, can you reach out today and receive it? by inviting him into your heart. Do that if you have not done it before. And for those of us who believe that we have received that salvation, begin to pray right now and thank him for that salvation. Time does not permit us to go into the details of what that salvation actually means. But thank him. Who saw you before the foundation of the world and saved you and placed upon you a mark that you belong to Jesus Christ. You belong to him through Jesus Christ. And then seal that with the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Just begin to thank him. For you are complete in him. You will not perish, but have everlasting life. You are a forever being, just like he is. You are eternal now because you have Jesus in you. Just begin to pray. Establish yourself. That, that is why we are doing this. We are doing this now. Amen? That's number one. Settling your salvation issue. If you have not received him, ask him to give you salvation right now to save your soul. For that is the gift of God, eternal life. If you have received him, you have thanked him for it and continue to thank him. Number two, are you having issues with your health? By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. The issue of your health is a settled matter. The Bible says that you have received power to heal every manner of sickness and disease. I want you right now to be active. Let your faith be active. Let your faith be actionable. Amen? Exercise that authority that you have received. And come now begin to command every sickness and disease in your body to be healed and to leave your body now in the name of Jesus. Are you following me? I'm no longer preaching. I'm not asking you to do warfare. 
for the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent man takes it by force. The Lord has finished the work. He has reported to the Father that the job is done. He has brought for you eternal and divine health. The day he allowed his back to be exposed and he was whipped and stripped. And the Bible confirmed that, declared that by his stripes you are already healed. What do you do? when you are having sickness in your body, when you are already healed. And he says, I give you power to heal every manner of sickness and every manner of disease. You have authority in your mind. He said, I give you power over every unclean spirit. In your mind is the power of life and death. Command every sickness in your body. Confront them, resist them, the Bible says and the devil will flee, up, flee from you. That spirit of infirmity will flee from you. Command right now, you can, you can, you can unmute and pray. Actually, you should, be, you should be unmuted right now. Because we are concluding this, winding is down. Stand against the spirit of infirmity. Stand against the spirit of sickness and oppression. Command them to leave your body right now. Command them to go because you have the power Jesus, sickness in my head, and sickness in my heart, and sickness in my tongue, and sickness in my womb, and sickness in my body, known or unknown, I say by the power of the Almighty Jesus, be healed, 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 be healed. To heal in the mighty name of Jesus. This is not your body. This is not your body. This is not your body. Be down, be down, be down. Mighty name of Jesus. Pray to God who sent this perfect hand, perfect hand, and the sickness of his body is mine. But bring my head, but bring my head, bring my head, but bring my any part of my body. The mighty name of Jesus, I am healed. 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 Healed in Jesus' name. That that sickness that is bothering my family, ailment, any arrow the evil one had thrown into this family. Holy Ghost fire to him. Amen. And command all forces. Pray again and command all forces and powers militating against and forming a siege against your prosperity to break their siege and release and vacate your blessings now in Jesus' name. Amen. Every evil force, any evil arrow that have been thrown my way, that have been thrown in my direction, frustrate my getting to where you want me to be in prosperity. It goes fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Ghost fire. Begin to destroy, disperse, disperse. Any evil power, evil force, evil arrow that have been thrown into this family. 
life denies us to say we shall not get your blessings, all the resources that you have said it's ours. Holy Ghost fire begins to scatter, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus. Father of my Savior Jehovah, there is no light in fire. You have proclaimed it in my life, you have proclaimed it in the life of my children, you have proclaimed it in the life of our family. Your goodness, resources, your joy, that is us in the mighty name of Jesus. We claim it, I 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 claim it in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, Jehovah. Amen. Command all powers and forces of darkness standing and walking together to steal, kill, and destroy your prosperity to break their ranks and scatter in Jesus' name. All Amen. Hallelujah. All Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, let them scatter. If they have gathered, if they have gathered, if they have thought about it, if they are still planning it, let there be scattered. Name of Jesus, any power, any power that is trying to come together or have come together or are already at it, planning to destroy my prosperity, the prosperity of my family, the prosperity of my lineage, Holy Ghost, fire, 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 Dislodge, dislodge, dislodge. Put confusion in that camp. Put confusion in that camp. Put confusion in that camp. In the mighty name of Jesus. Scatter, scatter, scatter. When the ghost fire begin to burn, begin to burn, begin to burn, begin to burn. Cause confusion in that camp in Jesus' name. Amen. When we started, we said there are things that we had hoped for. We are looking forward to be accomplished in our life before the end of this year. But we can see that a lot of them are still outstanding. That's why you are doing this exercise. There is a siege against your prosperity. You remember the case of Daniel, how he began to pray. The Bible said the day he began, he made up his mind to pray, God answered his prayer. But it took 21 more days for him to begin to realize the answer to the prayer. Why? Because there are forces in the heavenly places, evil forces of darkness, who we are working yeah. against his prosperity. That's why we are doing this exercise. This house clean is for you to check through and rise up and realize the thing that belongs to you and then resist them and go after them because you already have the power to do so. Now, let us also pray now, in the name of Jesus Christ, speak to every mountain standing between you and your destiny to be uprooted and cast into the sea. Every mountain Amen. Amen. that are blocking your vision. Every mountain. In the mighty name of Jesus, you that mountain, you that mountain that is blocking my destiny, is blocking my vision, blocking my prosperity. Thou removed now in the mighty name of Jesus. Be thou removed into the deep ocean. Be thou removed into the depths of the sea. Now you are not going to obstruct my holiness. You are not going to obstruct my destiny. You are not going to obstruct my prosperity. You, that mountain, is blocking my view, that is blocking me from getting to my destiny, that is blocking me from getting to my prosperity, that is blocking my family from getting to our destiny and our prosperity, that is blocking my lineage from getting to that our destiny. 
and our prosperity to walk in it together. Uproot, 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 uproot that mountain and drop it in the depths of the sea. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Every obstacle, every mountain that have read its head concerning my destiny and said it to block my prosperity in God, my holiness in God, Holy Ghost fire, my salvation in God, Holy Ghost fire, the salvation of my family, the salvation of my lineage. I say, Holy Ghost fire, 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 fire. Uproot, 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 uproot that mountain and drop it in the depths of the ocean. The mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus, thank you. The mountain must be made flat and be cast into the sea. Jesus. Amen. Amen. To you, God is saying to you right now that by Christ Jesus, I have this day given you power to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down every power of darkness working against you and your family. Amen. By the reason of the anointing, decree their destruction right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You have the power of God. Hallelujah. To, to, uh, to throw down, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down every power of darkness working against you and your family. Amen. They should, by the reason of the anointing that came by Christ Jesus, decree, decree their destruction right now in Jesus' name. Amen, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Holy Ghost, Father, by your grace, by your power, you that destroyer, you that mountain has targeted my life, that have targeted my family, that have targeted my destiny, that have targeted the destiny of my children and the destiny of my generation. I say I destroy now in the mighty name of Jesus. Be thou destroyed. Be thou destroyed. Be thou destroyed. Be thou destroyed. Be thou uprooted. Uproot, 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 uproot. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are destroyed. You are scattered by the power of the Almighty Jesus. Fire, fire, fire of the Holy Ghost. 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 Be Begin to destroy, begin to destroy, begin to destroy. That arrow, that, that arrow, that evil arrow, that evil arrow is destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Destroy, 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 destroy in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire, begin to destroy. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, fire, Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, begin to destroy. Scatter, 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 destroy. Destroy, scatter, scatter, destroy, scatter, destroy, scatter, scatter, scatter. In the mighty name of Jesus, my prosperity is assured in God. My salvation is assured in God. My holiness is assured in God. Holy Ghost fire, fire, begin to to destroy that evil arrow, that evil thought. Those that have gathered, they will be destroyed. Anywhere they have gathered, anywhere they've gathered, they will be scattered, destroyed, scattered, scattered, destroyed. Whoever that person is, whichever group it is, from my mother's side, from my father's side, from my husband's side, Holy Ghost, fire, 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 
Fire of the Holy Ghost, begin to scatter them, begin to scatter them, begin to scatter them. It will not hold, they will not hold. Confusion, 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 confusion. In the name of Jesus, I cover myself in Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Finally, finally, in their place, in the place of all these ones that you have uprooted, rooted out, pulled down, destroyed, and cast down, in their place, prophesy, decree, and command to build and to plant what you desire. You, you understand me? You yeah. have removed the forces of darkness. You have attacked them and uprooted them and removed them from their root networks and their influences and branches that are blocking your prosperity and working against you. In their place, because when you take out trash, in the place you put, you plant something new. You plant your desire. You plant the will of God. Prophesy by prophecy now. You are calling forth. You are decreeing to the performance. And you are commanding to build and to plant what you desire. Claim Amen. And send it to the blood Thank of you, Jesus. Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I know by your grace it is done. It is finished. It is finished. My prayer, Lord, and I decree in your power by your grace, Jehovah, that I will plant holiness, 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 holiness. Vision of God in the mighty name of Jesus, prosperity of the Almighty, prosperity of the Almighty. My children, I will have joy, I will have married, I will have joy, I will have prosperity in my family. My children will bring joy and peace. My children will be rooted in Christ, in holiness, in salvation. They will have that. They will have that. They will grow in the Lord. I am putting the seed of salvation, the life of my children. I'm planting the seed of holiness in the life of I'm planting the seed of holiness Holiness and salvation and prosperity in the life of Joma Dak Gregor, Chines de Zuchech Gregor. My oh father, my lineage will have your prosperity. Your, my lineage will have the peace and joy of the Lord. My lineage, I'm planting your salvation and holiness in my in my lineage. In millions of years to come, there will be prosperity, there will be joy in in the lineage of Felvira or Lucia Kutos. We will proclaim your goodness. Your joy will be our portion all the rest of our lives. We are going to keep holding on to you. I am planting Bible in my lineage. I'm planting salvation of God, Almighty God, in my lineage. I'm planting holiness of God in my lineage. My children will not move without the Lord. I I am planting their life in Christ. I take Choma and Dakugwego, I take Chineze Zuchetigo, and I plant them in the life of God. They will be rooted in Christ. Their roots, the, the drink they get, the water they drink, the food they eat will be the word of God. The prosperity in their lives will show you they will have abundance, abundance of God's prosperity. 
joy is say, anything, whatever it is, holiness. I am planting holiness in their lives. I'm planting salvation in their lives. They are going to be perfect women of God. Their children will be perfect children of God. I'm planting your salvation upon their lives. I'm planting because this is my heritage. This is my heritage. This is my lineage. My children will stand in holiness. My children will stand holding the Bible and proclaiming the joy and love of the Lord all the days of their life. And their children's 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 children. That is what I'm planting today in the mighty name of Jesus. They will enjoy the prosperity, unadulterated prosperity of God. Everything they touch will smell of goodness of God. Everything they do will be the goodness of God exhibiting in their lives and in generations to come. In the mighty name of Jesus, my life will show your prosperity forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. It's done. Yes, it's done. It's done. Yes, it's done. Shielding your name. By the shell of It is sealed, O Lord. It shall be permanent to Father. Our victory shall be permanent to Lord. Our breakthrough shall be permanent to Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, O Lord. My family victory shall be permanent. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, thank you, thank you Father. Lord, for the victory of this day. Hallelujah. Halleluah. So we shall it done, be in man. Jesus' name. Begin to in thank the God mighty name for of the accomplishment Jesus. of Thank you for a new dawn in my marriage. For a new dawn in my family. Thank you for a new dawn in my own life. For the victory of my son's life. In my life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. My generations of joy, my generations, kids, centuries of children, centuries of holy, 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 saved generation from my loins in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 oh Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this planting. Thank you, Jesus, for the continued planting. Thank you, Almighty God, for you alone had proposed this day and it has come to be. It has been planted. No evil can uproot it. It has been planted. No more choice. It has to be what you want and it will be in my life. It will be my line it will be in my children. Oh, Jehovah, I thank you. Thank you. I thank you. I say, thank you. Hey, I say, give me children. I'll dedicate them to you. I have, I'll continue to dedicate. I'll continue to dedicate. I'll continue to dedicate. Because your salvation is their portion. Your goodness is their portion. Your holiness is their portion. The word of God is my generation and generation and generation to infinities mighty name of Jesus they will hold on to you forevermore no adulterated adulterated Christianity to be the original from almighty God in Jesus name hallelujah 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 amen hallelujah so it is a socialist day Amen. 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 It is settled and it is finished. finished. Yes. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed.
Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 A communion? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Please break your bread. Break your bread. Break your bread, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Father. No evidence of your commandment, oh Jesus. We break this bread. With this communion. Because the communion is the power against the body of Christ. In the mighty I name of Jesus. In the life of I Christ. connect with your body, Lord. I we connect with your blood, body, Jesus. With this bread, I connect with your body. Together in agreement, you will give it to us. So by this Jesus. bread, we are in agreement. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Healing. Oh, healing in my body. In the same manner. Oh, healing in my life. Having broken the bread with us, given and eaten it, pick up your cup. It's not. The life of Christ. Amen. The blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yeah. yeah. Transmitted unto you. Amen. In the name of the Father. Amen. In the name of the Son. Amen. In the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can go ahead with your announcement.